Hi guys, this is Roman, Nature Filmmaker, and I would like to explain how we um, remove, um, how to remove liquor in your video when you filming uh, with DNG RAW format, like DNG RAW sequence format. So, for example, uh, I film a beautiful campfire that I created in a beautiful area Washington State Cam Cam Creek Skate uh, uh, sorry uh, Skate Creek Road yeah Skate Creek Road and um, I film with uh, Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K Ursa Mini Pro yeah 4.6K and I like to film in D in DNG format sometimes because I have more creativity in the color corrections. So DNG format, uh, Blackmagic camera, old Blackmagic cameras, not new one, but old one can film in DNG raw format, like Blackmagic 4K production camera, and also Blackmagic uh, Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K. And this is like image sequence, this is separate audio, and se uh, each frame separate. Each frame rough rough dng picture so this is rough dng format from black magic uh, cameras and i like this format and i know and i know how before i film with a black magic production camera and i film often in this format uh, nature because it's just amazing quality of video and but to, to get that amazing picture, you uh, I uh, d did editing through After Effects, and I will show you how. But sometimes, it's it's very rare. But sometimes I can see flickering in the video when I do color correction through After Effects, through Adobe Camera Bridge, through After Effects. Uh, sorry, Adobe Camera Raw. So, for example. We open After Effects. It's very important to check how many frames you will import image. It's very important. So to check this, you need to go up to just a second. You need to go up to Preference and to Import. 24 per second 24 frame per second and yes I film also 24 frame per second after that when I checked this is very important because before actually I film 24 per um, before I did mistake I didn't check this and it, by default is 30 frame per second I install new Adobe like upgrade or install in computer and didn't uh, didn't check this and by default again it's just 30 frames per second and I import video I imported video 24 frames per second I'm sorry I imported I filmed 24 frames per second but I did import like with 30 frames per second so it was like a little bit uh, faster video so I didn't notice this before when I finished gray after when I finished all footage all grading footage so and it took a lot of time for me to redo it so again very very important to check import and make sure this is 24 frame per second or 30 frame or 60 it depends how you film I film 24 so let's import one footage example how uh, we do color correction basic color correction so this is folder with the uh, footage and it's like uh, you see it's a lot of uh, it's each folder each folder have uh, each folder is one footage and each in each folder we have uh, image sequence like a lot of images and this is a rough DNG image 4.6k 
of the ng image. So let's import this image. This footage, for example, we take first one and put and import. Oh, sorry, this is just my creativity. And let's make reset to default. So this is how look image when you import. Let's let's repeat again. I will show you. Import file. You can choose any frame, like this one, this one. But please put, make sure that it's uh, you have camera raw sequence and create composition here. Put marker here. Again, choose any frames. Usually I start choose first frame, and this is separate sound from my video. I import video and this this is my creativity this is like my color corrections like trying to make him fire black and white sometimes <laughs> but reset to default and this is how look image so and just in this video I will show you how we do basic color corrections like how we should look in normal image like how you film so let's do color correction so i go to basic this is a dng raw image so usually i to make a um, big dynamic range in the image because it's already big dynamic range uh, black magic says is 15 stops of dynamic range in a ursa 4.6 k pro i like this camera so much because with this camera I can film in a different format, like b -Rov, like DNG, RAW format, like, uh, and, all, and, all, and also with all ProRes flavors, like ProRes 42, ProRes even 444, high, or even highest ProRes, you know. So, yeah, all even ProRes proxy, so all kind of formats you can film with this camera. It's amazing camera, but I like to film with this. I keep this camera. It's old. I have Blackmagic also 12K camera, also 12K. But it's uh, but I keep this camera because I like DNG format, and sometimes I like to film in that format because I have more creativity in the color corrections and image look more more beautiful when you do call, when you doing this method, like import to After Effects. So, usually I down highlights to make bigger dynamic range, range, open shadows and down whites. It, image look flatter, but we have big dynamic range. And after that, I doing color corrections, like a little bit contrast, a little bit saturation, a little bit vibrance. If you need to change temperature or tint, you can do this. But in this image, probably I doubt I see a little bit pinky. Pinky this uh, wood. So I just little bit. I will do like plus five, not more. Little bit down to tint. Again, uh, and this image look bright. So I down a little bit exposure. And this is how should to look image. By default, 40 sharpening is too much actually. So I will put 25. Before actually it was 25. And after that, when I did basic color corrections, I saving this preset create preset and I give name basic color
Okay. And after that, I push button OK. Actually, it's caps lock in my keyboard. I need to remove caps lock. And I see this image in After Effects. This is video. After that, I doing uh, compose. Uh, sorry, I doing file and doing uh, export. Add to Adobe Media Encoder. Now we're going to uh, export in uh, uh, ProRes 42 because we already did color correction. We just simple doing export in ProRes 42 format. When I do an export in uh, ProRes 42, I usually yeah, put Apple ProRes 42 codec. I live in original resolution, frame rate 24 as I film. Usually I put a render and maximum death and use maximum render quality and put 16 uh, bit colors here. And okay. I do an export without sound because, because sound recorded separate. But actually I can do also with the sound, I need to also import sound from this file and put sound here. No. You know, it's we can also in, 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 do export with the sound, but but this time I do it without without sound. So uh, probably need to put sound here. Yeah, I need to put sound here, and now you can do export video with the sound also. Let's export video with the sound, but but we need uh, very important to choose folder where we would like to export because by default it's like exporting to exporting to system disk C but I choose my disk D with uh, like 20 terabyte and uh, start to export and now we we do we see how our video exporting is like 4.6 resolution 24 frames Apple ProRes 42 okay. and we after that the image will export we will check quality of this image but uh, but uh yeah but i will show you uh, another method more simplest more like a simplest method to to do color corrections dng raw files in premiere pro because I decided to do this time in Premiere Pro because I see flickering in the image. When we, it's, when we, um, I, I see flickering in the image and I can, I can show you. So this method is best for image quality. It makes image more, more superior quality, but sometimes it's rare we see I will show you. You can fire screen crew. So you can fire screen crew, export progress.
Sometimes you see flickering. Oh, la, 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 this is like same file. And and if you uh, if you guys see in the players, uh, I have pod player here. Let's check. And you see, guys, it's flickering. So this is sometimes it's flickering. You know, it's not. It's a big problem because it's like amazing quality of image. We did color corrections, you know. But even I did creative like uh, like this campfire creative, but I also see flickering. This is a rare situation, and it's probably because it's campfire, because bef usually like nineteen. Oh, for example, like this, this is crazy flickering, guys. This is this how crazy flickering this image. It's beautiful colors, it's amazing color corrections, yeah. We mm, see yeah, I a little bit overexposed this image with the campfire with uh, but but when you film campfire, I recommend you feel not to film in danger of format because or if you film in the format, do editing in Premiere Pro, not, not, not in After Effects, not it's like Adobe Camera Raw, because it's just probably light changing. It's like it's a lot of flickering. It's a lot of flickering. Yeah, I need to put zebra because in the camera because I a little bit overexposed uh, campfire here. Next time when I film campfire, I need to put this. I'm not overexposed and it's, this campfire look beautiful. Little bit unrealistic because flame is like red, but it's amazing image quality. But again, we see flickering. And it's just often, often flickering because it's campfire. So I don't know. Usually I often film with the DNG format and often um, do this this way color corrections. How I did, how I show you right now. It's usually it's ninety five percent fine, but campfire is not fine, you know, because it's just flickering every time. So I decide to do campfire in Premiere Pro. And this is this is our video uh, in the Premiere Pro. This is the same same video. And you see, guys, I did color correction through through Lumetri panel, but you know, it's not like amazing quality like like through first method through uh, After Effects through Adobe Camera Raw. It's more faster way, but it's not amazing colors, you know. I mean, it's it's amazing, beautiful also format like DNG Raw, it's amazing quality. But this is like no difference for me, ProRes or, or DNG Raw. It's very hard to, to find out. But sometimes, yeah. But sometimes for big bigger dynamic range, I recommend you film in a DNG row, DNG row format to make more more bigger dynamic range in a camera. So you see, guys, I did color correction in the same method. I down highlights, I down whites, I down sh I I open shadows a lot. I know, uh, but usually when I do this, when I film in a row format, but if it's not a raw format, I little bit doing less like highlights like this, like whites like this, shadows like this. But this is a raw format and we can like doing more, down more whites, down more shadows, up more. 
sorry, down, highlights, down whites, and up, up shadows a little bit more because it's just rough DNG format. It's allow us to do this. So yeah, and it's it's very cool because it's it's more, more uh, in this this method is more easiest, you know, because you, you import file like regular video, you know. So I will show you how to actually import. For example, we're doing uh, import v. You see folder with with those videos with image sequence. I choose one, for example, one footage, first footage, and it's import. And after that, actually, I need to go to folder and also choose one frame, and it's open, and it's video here, and I put in a timeline. So now it's video here, and this is how it looks without color grading. And it's also imported with a sound. It's very cool because it's save your time. It's more more faster than in a, through Adobe through After Effects and Adobe Camera Raw. But image not is is looking also amazing, but it's not, not not like superior amazing in a, through uh, After Effects method. So I do in contrast again highlights down, shadows up whites down, saturation, like this, and maybe shadows less, a little bit, yeah, whites less. It's good to, to have whites uh, down and highlights down because we see whites, white snow and we see also br br bright, bright uh, fire, you know, bright snow yeah maybe i go to creative and do, we'll do a little bit vibrance image look very um, image look a um, little bit um, warm so i will do like this little bit yeah Let's check image, and you see it's it's look fine, it's amazing, but it's not like amazing like through Adobe DNG um, method. But but it will be without flickering. What is more important? So this method will do without any flickering. So yeah, and I decided to to do color corrections this time. Campfire in Premiere Pro, DNG raw format. But before I did in After Effects. But again, I repeat, image looks more amazing because I have a lot of creativity. Actually, add noise here. You see image a little bit like cinema noise. I you see in the image. Image look very detailed. You can check in the stones. It looks amazing. Colors, but we have one problem. You, you check this image, it's just, it's a lot of detail, you know, a lot of detail in the trees. Yeah. It looks like, you know, in quality, but, but, you know, will we'll do in Premiere Pro because of this flickering, you see flickering here in the image. So, but it's not, oh, it's just terrible flickering here. So after that, I just would like to recommend you not to do color corrections through After Effects, through Adobe Camera Raw when you film Campfire. Do color corrections in a Premiere cause of flicker. You cannot remove this flicker in a Adobe. At least I don't know how to remove, but probably you cannot remove. But in any kind other situation, usually I do color correction in after 
in um, an Adobe camera, be, uh, Adobe camera rough because because it just you know uh, colors and image look mo more amazing, you know, m like superior amazing. But again, this image also look fine. It's like DNG raw format, but um, I like how I like better how looks through how image looks when I do color correction through After Effects and Adobe Camera Bridge, but but it takes time longer. Our footage is finished. Let's check. Footage with the sound, but you see, guys, flickering here. It's flickering. Also, we see we need to remove. Mm. Also, we see it's again another video footage is again flickering. But But this same video, and I did color correction through Premiere, is different colors, yeah? It's also beautiful, it's different. But we see less detailed a little bit, you know? And also, it's it's nice, it's beautiful, but it's different. I like Z color, colors, you know, that, that method. But it's also beautiful image, amazing image. But we see here, here no, no, less, less flickering, and we see also less. Uh, actually, we see less. Um, sorry, we see less um, chromatic aberrations of of the of the lens when it do when we do this method just through Premiere Pro. So, and you guys. Decide which method you like. Sometimes, when I go format, I usually use a method after because image looks more amazing. But yeah, and other uh, other formats, I do color correction, of course. In this is just, I would like to show how I do color corrections of DNG raw format through After Effects through Adobe Camera Raw. Sometimes people say, why are you doing this? Be because it's longer, but its image looks more amazing. But sometimes you can see an image flickering. It's not often. Sometimes it depends what you shoot. In this case scenario, we film campfire and it's just a lot of flickering. But I film nature, so when I film nature, it's like less flickering. It's not often flickering. May, sometimes maybe when I film oceans or sky or something like, I see a little bit flickering, but it's just very rare. Very rare, like few few video files. But 95, 97% is fine. And its image looks more amazing. This is my experience. What to do in the in a case scenario who would like to, who, who, who doing color correction, through who doing uh, DNG raw sequence color correction through Adobe Camera Raw and After Effects and see this flickering. What to do? Just do color correction in a Premiere Pro. Uh, image will look different, but it you will see zero flickering. Okay, guys, thank you for attention and yes yeah, sorry for a long video but you know i need to explain detailed this problem but i resolve this problem so if, if you see flickering in your image when you're doing color correction in after effects i repeat uh, I, I will repeat again in after effects and adobe camera raw then just import video file we import that sequence raw sequence to premiere pro and do color correction in Premiere Pro. Okay, guys. Thank you.
拜。